We are all coming from different countries to criticize uh, the Human Rights Council. The, the fact is, and um, Hillel was very articulate in saying so, the General Assembly is a place where everyone can talk to each other. Because there, there's arguably a place for someone to, for, for countries to be able to talk to each other, to be able to air their differences and so on. The Human Rights Council has to be something a little different. And um, it is tragically and farcically a wayward agency that has refused to act on horrific circumstances across the world simply because its membership does not want to. Why? Ten years ago, as Hillel pointed out, Kofi Annan said the Human Rights Commission is a disaster. It is harming the United Nations. We need to create something new. And I remember because I've seen the footage. He said the Human Rights Council is not, um, you know, same wine, new bottle. You know, no. He said this was going to be completely different. The fact is, ten years on, it's as bad as it was under the commission. And you you have a grotesque miscarriage of its duties. Grotesque. In in nine years of its existence, not once has it ever criticized the dictatorship of China. And I don't care what, what kind of um, commercial relationships people have with China. The fact is that China has eight million political prisoners in the Laogai labor camps. Not one word by the Human Rights Commission. In nine years, not one word about the only totalitarian police state in the Western Hemisphere. I'm, of course, speaking about Cuba. Anyone who has visited Cuba can attest to the fact that it is a police state. It doesn't let its own people leave. There are very few countries in the world that don't let you leave, North Korea being one of them, Equatorial Guinea, a dictatorship in the armpit of Africa that buys uh, buys Washington and buys London through massive expenditure and lobbying, doesn't let its people leave. And neither does Cuba. That, I don't care what discussions there are about other issues. If they don't let you leave, there's something fundamentally wrong here. Let's start looking at it. Not one word of criticism in nine years of existence of the Human Rights Council against Cuba. Russia, under Putin, a gangster. Not one word of criticism of Russia in the Human Rights Council. The Human Rights Council has rightly um, talked about all sorts of problems under democracies. And so should it be, because the violations carried out by democracies, whether willfully or accidentally or however else, should be aired. But the Human Rights Council is, unfortunately, a betrayal of all of the principles of the United Nations. And so uh, I'm merely here to tell you that um, it, it, it's d despite the fact that the, the people in the council, by the way, have such delicate sensibilities that a talk like the one Hillel just gave, or just brief remarks about this and its membership, would immediately lead them to shut off the microphone, would immediately lead them to call on the chairman to say, shut down that microphone, we will not have that kind of talk here because it is not dignified. To them, it is not dignified to talk about human rights in the Human Rights Council. To them, it is only dignified to use the cover of human rights to cover up the multiple crimes, in some cases, crimes against humanity, committed by its members. And it doesn't really, and it's not a question of where they are politically, and it's not a question of which one is an ally of China or an ally of the United States or an ally of Russia, because in, in the same pot, you have Saudi Arabia, you have Cuba, two countries that have a completely different relationship to, to, to the nation that hosts um, the New York headquarters of the United Nations. And yet the hypocrisy is deafening. So um, with, with that, uh, what, what we're doing here is standing athwart history and uh, trying to bring a little sunlight to what is going on. And you, you all have, should have a copy uh, of, of the report and the methodology of it. It's pretty scientific. And to, of course, we define states between dictatorships and competitive authoritarian states. Some states are not dictatorships, but they behave in an authoritarian manner. What does this mean? They will have elections periodically where they do not permit free and fair elections. They will take control of the media. They will censor the media. They will persecute people who are in the opposition, and so on and so forth. So for instance, 
uh, the state of Ecuador under Rafael Correa is a competitive authoritarian country. It is not a dictatorship. We use the, the definition laid out by a Harvard scholar, Steve Levitsky, who wrote a book about competitive authoritarian states. So there's, there's some science to this. This is hardly an emotional uh, response to this election. Um, with that, I, I would like to uh, give way to start the speakers who you came to listen to. The first one is Diego Arria. Now, Diego Arria is uh, a monumental, towering figure in, in the field of human rights. Why is that? Well, beyond the fact that he has extensive experience in government, first as a congressman, then a, as a mayor, as a governor, he also was the um, ed editorial director and, and chairman of the Diario de Caracas in Venezuela, one of the most important, um, if you will, standards of keeping government honest. And it was a very important newspaper when he was ahead of it. It is still in existence in digital form. Mr. Ayer went on to a distinguished career as a diplomat. He was president of the Security Council um, as the permanent representative for Venezuela in the United Nations. And as president of the Security Council, he watched very closely the slow motion genocide that was being carried out by Slobodan Milosevic. And as a result, uh, Ambassador Aria has been, um, it, you know, he is in all sorts of textbooks and footage as a witness, as a um, as, as someone who cared when no one else did. He is, you may have heard of the ARIA formula, the ARIA formula with regard to having meetings, that was actually something that he devised, that he came up with, and uh, he, he is not here to talk to you about his many experiences as a diplomat. He is here to talk to you about Venezuela, and why Venezuela should not be elected. Venezuela, the government, uh, which is a, a government in which he served for more than a decade, a country that he knows inside and out, um, a country where he has been a politician, a uh, candidate for the presidency. Uh, Diego Arria will tell you why it is Venezuela should not be elected. Uh, after Mr. Arria, you will hear from two other speakers, and then we will take questions. So with that, I'd like to invite, please, uh, the Ambassador Diego Arria to come and tell us why Venezuela should not be elected to the Human Rights Council um, tomorrow.